Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. Alright, so today we're going to paint sunflowers in a field and I'm going to be sipping on a little Pinot Noir. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. Alright, so for the materials today we're going to be using a Stretch and Prime 16 by 20 canvas. You can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'm going to be using. I'll be using acrylic paint today. The colors that I'm using are Titanium White, Burnt Umber, which I'll call Brown, Chrome Orange, Cobalt Blue, Mars Black, Green Oxide, and this is Chrome Yellow. And of course you can switch up those colors, but that's what I'm going to be using. I'll be using three brushes today. The brushes are a half inch wide bristle brush, a number eight round brush, and then I have a number one round brush. And I'll probably call these small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And again, you can switch those up if you'd like to. I'm going to have a cup of water for washing my brushes and a paper towel for drying my brushes. And I will also be giving you or providing you with some information in the description below. Um, the first thing I'm gonna provide you with is a link where you can purchase this uh, DIY kind of paint kit. Uh, it's got all the same materials that I'm using. It's affordable and convenient. So that's there if you're interested. There's also a free downloadable uh, image of the final painting. So it's just a link that you you know can download. You can print out that picture, use it as a visual reference as you go along, as well as written step-by-step -step instructions um, that you can certainly print and use those as well. And that's all you're going to need today. All right. So what we're going to do for the first step is we're going to paint our sky. I'm going to use my big bristle brush and I'm going to be using brown, blue, and white. Sounds a little odd to be using in the sky brown, but you'll see why in a minute. I'm going to have my sky uh, occupy about two thirds or three quarters of my canvas. So to know how far down I want my sky to go, it, you can visually kind of just pick a halfway point and then come down. If you want it a quarter of the way, you come down halfway between here and here. If you want it a third of the way, you just come down a little bit. What I'm going to do is I've kind of placed my finger where I want that sky to come down to. I'm going to load my brush with brown, blue, and white all at the same time. And I'm just going to kind of make myself a little marker. I'm going to see how high that side is. Use my brush as a ruler. I'm going to mark it with my finger. I'm going to come over to the other side and make myself a similar marker. So that's going to give me a visual as to where the sky um, comes down. You could certainly make hills and stuff like that, but I'm going to kind of go with almost a straight horizon line. So now that I have those three colors on my brush, I'm going to start painting my sky with a circular motion with the end of my brush. My goal here is I'm going to have my sky the darkest in the bottom left and I'm going to move to a really light sky in the top right. This is going to give the illusion of the sun being up in the top right hand corner. So it may look a little bit dark to you as you first start. Don't worry about that. You can work it out. You can make it a little bit lighter if you want. The next time I go to pick up paint, I'm just picking up blue and white. I didn't pick up any more brown. You might want to, if you want to neutralize the, the tones in the sky a little bit, you can certainly pick up a little bit more brown. Um, but my trick here is I'm not using a lot of paint. And what's going to happen is my paint will dry quickly. And that allows me to keep putting layers upon layers um, which will benefit you if you want to change the tone of that sky in any, in any way. Um, I'm using the brown in the sky in order to make it look like a more natural color, um, but I also want it to almost look like hazy or uh, maybe it's a hot summer day and, you know, maybe there was a, a I don't know, a storm that just passed by and it's just got those low-lying clouds off in the distance with a little atmospheric dimension that it's working off. Um, some people like to paint the edges or the sides of your canvas as you go, so if you see me kind of creeping over here on the side, that's why I'm doing that. Um, 
but as I'm going towards that right hand corner, I'm just picking up more white paint. I don't wash my brush, I just continue to pick up more white paint. And if it goes too light on me, then I'll bring back either a little bit of the blue or a little bit of the brown. Um, and again, I'm not using a ton of paint, so it may take a little while to accomplish this step, um, but just know that the effect of it is, is really um, a, a good one. Um, so taking the time on it will, will definitely be behoove you. Um, but you might also notice that I am, as I'm applying my paint in one section, I kind of back it into the previous section. What that is doing is it's providing me with a more um, gradual transition from the dark color to the light color. Um, and I, you'll often see me, I go back into my previous area too, because I like to keep working that paint as it's drying. Um, so as, as I'm going, moving onward and upward, I do tend to find myself coming back um, and almost reversing it. But my goal here, the, these are these are beautiful sunflowers. I know that they come out in, I think late summer is when they typically come and show their beautiful faces. Um, so I know that, you know, late summer, I live in New England, It late summer is that you're itching for that nice fall crisp, you know, weather to come about, but um, there's still those days where you have this beautiful, you know, hot summer, you know, sun poking out and, you know, adding great highlights to everything. So that's why I'm really trying to accomplish a beautiful light area up in this top right hand corner. And it's also going to give us some great direction as to where we're going to put the, the highlights and stuff on on our flower when we get to it. Um, so I'm just kind of finishing up here. I'm still just kind of adding white paint to my dirty brush, which is allowing me to work off um, some of those darker blues. And now that I've got it pretty in, pretty much in place, you'll see my head is going back now. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm just really looking over my canvas, making sure I didn't miss any spots, and I'm blending more. So I'm sitting here, and as my paint is drying, I am just continuing to blend, which is softening these tones. Maybe yours ends up looking like there's wispy clouds flying by. Maybe yours looks like it's about to rain. Maybe you didn't get yours as light up in that top right hand corner. You know, you could, what, whatever the, um, the outcome is, it's going to be great because there's so many different ways the sky can look. So if you have yours a nice uniform look, awesome. That means you don't have any clouds in there. That's totally fine. If you get it to look almost, you know, fluffy, like there's, you know, little puffs of light spots, that's going to tell the viewer that maybe there's some clouds there. And I think that I've accomplished what I was going for with that lightness up in the top right hand corner. So our next step, we are going to use this brush. So when you feel like you've got this transitioned as well as you want it to, you can wash and dry this big brush and get ready for the next step. All right. So what we're going to do for the next step is we are uh, painting the ground. I'm going to use my big bristle brush. The colors I'm going to use are black, brown, and green. Um, I'm not going to use a lot of paint and I'm going to be using a dotting technique. My goal here is to get a very uneven horizon line that's going to look like there's little trees popping up and I want to have some light spots and some dark spots throughout my grass. So I'm going to start with all three colors on my brush at the same time. So a little bit of black, a little bit of brown, and a little bit of green. And I'm just going to start dotting away. So I'm sitting here and I'm just going to start dotting away. The reason I do this is so I can understand what's going to come off of my brush. And to me, I, I, I feel like I had a good quantity, so that's what I'm going to go for for now. So I'm reloading my brush. I am not going to wash my brush throughout this process. Um, what I do is every time I go to reload my brush, I'm going to pick up a different type of quantity of, the, of those colors. So maybe next time I pick up the paint, I just pick up green. And maybe the time after that, maybe I'll just pick up brown. Um, you can see I'm giving an uneven top to my horizon line, which is great because it's going to 
give the viewer the information that maybe those are some distant trees that we're looking at. Um, I just reloaded my brush with a little bit of brown and black. And the goal here is to just hide the, um, that line where the grass meets the, or the um, land meets the sky. So you might have to go a little bit darker with the color up on this top edge just so um, you can hide that line. And then once I get this real horizon kind of accomplished, then I'm really just gonna have some fun. I just picked up some green. I'm just gonna kind of dot away in a chaotic fashion, not a rhythm, not an organized fashion. Um, so this way when I'm doing a little bit of chaos, what ends up happening is I get some light spots and some dark spots, which is gonna give the illusion that maybe there's a little tiny rolling hill over there, or maybe this is a, a nice green pasture where there's there's cows that have eaten away some of the some of the grass and we've got some maybe bald spots in the grass or some dirtier spots in the grass that are exposing the dirt a little bit more. So that's that's the benefit to using these three colors kind of in a um, an orthodox kind of way where you're just rotating the use of them. Um, it provides you with that nice natural look. And you know, maybe this is a field that's gonna be filled with these sunflowers. I went to Tuscany a couple of years ago and they have the beautiful sunflower fields out there. So we're gonna we're gonna, you know, kind of live virtually on our canvases here, thinking that we're in some faraway exotic land looking at a beautiful you know, a uh, sunflower field. And I'm just kind of finishing up here. Um, the next step, we are gonna use this same brush, but uh, we're gonna wanna wash it and dry it. So once you get this step all nice and done and you've got a nice assortment of greens and browns, uh, be careful of the black. You probably, if you're painting with me, you might have already noticed uh, the black is very powerful. So you don't really need too much of it. Um, and at times I'm just kind of letting my brush run out of paint. That really also helps to give you some light spots and some dark spots. And I'm just gonna make sure I got the majority of it painted. Doesn't have to be every single speckle. And then I'm gonna wash and dry this brush in preparation for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting the first layer of the center of the flower. I'm gonna use my uh, big bristle brush and I'm gonna be using brown and black. I'm gonna put them both on my brush at the same time. So brown and a little bit of black. Again, the black takes, you know, it's very powerful. So I'm just using a little bit of black. Um, to know where and how big this is gonna be, I'm gonna have, it's gonna be kind of an oval shape, um, maybe a little round, but oval too. I'm gonna to kind of decide where the center of my canvas is, and I'm gonna come down about halfway between the top and my grass in that halfway spot. And I'm just gonna make myself a little dot. Then I'm gonna come over about halfway between this mark and this mark. And I'm maybe somewhere about there. Now I'm gonna dot myself an oval with it being shorter at, uh, in the height and longer in the width. And it doesn't have to be a super duper oval. Um, this is kind of the shape of a softball, but maybe flattened a little bit. <laughs> and we're gonna make it look like it's coming right at you. So maybe you're squinting and that makes it look a little, you know, um, in the oval shape. So I'm not really doing too, too much here. I'm just kind of filling it in. I want my edges to be rough, which is why I am using this fluffy brush. Um, and then we're gonna switch brushes to the medium brush. So once you get this, this step done, you can put the big brush in your water cup, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna do the first layer of our stem and our leaves. I'm gonna use my medium brush and I'm gonna be using green and yellow. Those will be my dominant colors and I'll also use a little bit of brown and white. And how I'm gonna do this is I, this is gonna be a huge flower. So I'm gonna make a really wide stem and I'm gonna do my stems, my stem of the flower and stems of my leaves first. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put green 
and yellow, a little bit of brown, and a little bit of white on my brush all at the same time. I don't want my stem to be straight down like, I don't know, a telephone pole or a straw. I want mine to have a little bit of a bend to it. So I'm going to start a little bit to the left of the center of my flower and I'm going to, I have a lot of paint on my brush and I'm just going to do this kind of arcing motion. And you can see mine is um, a little bit see-through and the way to stop it from being see-through is to add a little bit more white to it. So that's going to help it not be so see-through. Once I have that on there, now I can add a couple of stems wherever I want um, a leaf to be. So I think I want a, a leaf to come over here, so I'm going to kind of put a stem out there. And I think I'm going to have another one coming up maybe somewhere in there. And then I'm going to have maybe another one. I don't want to take them too close to this flower center because I know I want a whole bunch of petals that are going to come out here. So I'm going to stop my leaves probably about halfway between my flower top and my ground. So that way it gives you enough place for the petals. So the next one I'm going to do, I'm just going to have one coming out right here. So those are going to be my stems for my, uh, or my, yeah, stems for my leaves. <laughs> and the, the nature of a sunflower leaf is kind of wide at the base and then pointy at the edges and they kind of flop over a little bit. So I'm going to have one maybe coming out in through here that's that's going to be the top and it's going to flop this way. So I'm just going to kind of make a little point coming in this direction. And you'll see once we put the highlights and stuff on them later that this will the shape will make sense to you. Um, this one over here, I'm going to have this one maybe coming up. Maybe we're looking at this one from the side. So this one's going to be almost like a little bit of a cup. And then maybe we're going to have this one just drooping over. And I'm going to just have this one almost like looking like a teardrop kind of shape. And then I'm seeing it see-through, so I'm going to add just a touch of white so I can make sure that it's not see-through anymore. And that's all I'm going to do for that step. Um, so we are going to use the same brush for the next step. So after you get your leaves on here and um, you have them all in place, we're going to use the same brush for the next step. You just want to wash it and dry it. All right. So what we're going to do for the next step is we are doing the first layer of our petals. I'm going to use my medium brush and I'm going to be using I'm going to use white, orange, and yellow. Um, so the makeup of a sunflower's petals, they're kind of long and pointy, but they have a little bit of a bubble in the middle of them. Um, think of it like a long teardrop maybe. And as I do these, I don't want them to stick straight out. I like mine to have kind of a little bit of a bend to them. And I want my sunflower to kind of look like it's almost leaning back towards the sun. So I'm going to have, I'm going to have, you know, them on this side, but I may have some a little bit longer ones on the left hand side. So you'll see how I'm going to do this. Um, this is going to be the first layer. So if you're a little light or dark as you're doing this, don't worry. We've got another layer that will correct any color that you might not like. So I'm going to put all three colors on my brush at the same time, white, yellow, and orange, and I'm just going to start placing my petals. Um, it's What I recommend is maybe starting in this top left-hand corner so you can kind of see if you, know, you like the color and then you can adjust it from there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my petal, you know, something like that. You want to kind of touch a little bit into this center, but you don't need to cover the whole thing. And then as I go through these, I'm going to go one round kind of um, in this systematic kind of way. I'll make them a little bit pointy. I just ran into my center and there was a little bit of wetness there, but that's okay. So if you do the same and you have some brown that you hit or whatever, don't worry about it. I'm reloading my brush so you'll see 
lighter spots and darker spots. Sometimes I'm going to have more orange. Sometimes I'm going to have more yellow. And you'll see how that benefits us when we go to do that second layer. And as I come over to this side, maybe I start changing the shape a little bit as if maybe some of them are, you know, bending over or whatever. And I'm going to keep kind of in a consistent size over on this right side, and then I'll probably make them a little bit longer as I go towards that um, left hand side. I am closing them a little bit as they get towards, um, towards the base of the flower. Um, I'm going to do this first layer and then we're going to do a, a quick second um, petal structure, shorter ones, in a second. We're going to go around twice. Don't um, avoid the stem. I want you to paint right over it. The, um, the petals would be in front of the stem, so don't avoid the stem. That's kind of one of the common mistakes. Well, we don't, there's no mistakes in painting, but. And on this side, again, I'm gonna make these ones a little bit longer. It's okay, again, if you, you know, come out and they're a little pointy, you're gonna see in a second, I'm going to start to give a second layer here. And now that I've got that first layer, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna do, not systematically in between each one of these, but I want some shorter ones. So what I'm gonna do, I just kind of reloaded my brush and I'm not really going to think about it too hard. I'm just going to start making a second layer. And if you can't detect them all, don't worry about it. This is just going to give us kind of a dimensional element to it. And when we go to do um, the second layer of the petals, you'll see how we can um, get these to pop out a little bit more. And I'm just kind of finishing up here. And if you were to, you know, look at all the different varieties of sunflowers oh my god some of them there's really orange ones there's really yellow ones there's almost you know light almost like i don't want to i don't know if there's white ones but i know that there's very very pale yellow ones and i want this one to totally look like it's super alive like it was just born and it's like here i am i am the biggest boldest sunflower out there um, and Yeehaw! I'm just making sure I'm kind of getting a lot of these to, to the tips. I'm just kind of adding a couple extra little flip outs here. And then we are going to use the same brush for the next step. So when you get this all accomplished, you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right. So what we're going to do for the next step is we are doing the second layer of our leaves. I'm going to be using my end, end stem. I'm gonna use my medium brush and I'm gonna be using the same colors I used on the first layer, which are green, yellow, brown, and white. Um, and if when you're doing this or when you're about to do this, if you feel, if anything's wet on it, you're gonna to wanna to dry it because we do want them to be, this uh, the first layer to be dry before you do this step. So you could just grab a blow dryer and blow dry it if you want to. So my, um, my task here is to add highlights and shadows and I know that my highlights are going to be coming from the sun, which is going to be the top and the right side of these leaves. My shadows are going to be on the bottom and the left. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put my shadows in first. So I'm going to use brown paint on my medium brush and I'm going to decide where my shadows are. So I'm going to have shadows on the left. So I know I want shadows on the left of my stem. So I'm just taking my brown paint and I'm going right down that left-hand side. And if you're really bold, if you feel that this is um, not dark enough, you're more than welcome to add black to that left side, but brown is, is your safe bet. And then I'm gonna add a little bit here, and I'm gonna add a little bit on the, on the bottom side of this one, because it would be you know shadowed from that. I might add a little bit over here on this little tip of this, um, petal over here um, and I don't really do a lot maybe I'm gonna do a little bit under this one because maybe it is being um, shadowed by the top of the leaf and then I'm gonna start adding my green and yellow to just make sure that I've got everything into place so yellow I didn't wash my brush I just picked up some yellow and green so really I'm doing a second layer on this um, 
just to make sure that the shadows work with the stem. Oops, I missed a little bit of a shadow. Can't forget this piece. I just wiped my brush off on my paper towel because this is an important shadow right here. So I'm gonna put a little shadow over here on the left-hand side. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go for my highlights. So I just wiped my brush off of my paper towel. I'm gonna, my highlights are predominantly gonna be done with yellow and white. So I'm just putting a little bit of yellow and white on my brush. And my, my biggest tip for you is don't use a lot of paint um, because you can always add more, but if you add a lot of paint initially, it might make it a little bit difficult to manipulate where you want these highlights and shadows. So I definitely want them on the top right hand side. So I've got yellow and white on my brush right now. And this is a great place if you did want to reshape anything, you could certainly pull a little tip out or, you know, add a little bump here, a little bump there. And then I'm just going to take, I wiped my brush off on my paper towel, and I'm just going to take that wet paint and just kind of gently pull it into the, the darker area, my flower part, or my petal part. And if you want to, you can give it a little bit of a curve. That's gonna tell the viewer that it, you know, in fact has a little bit of a, of a bend to it. And you can, you know, make it brighter or darker. If you feel like you've gone too bright, you can certainly bring back some of the green. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and do this one over here. I've got yellow and white on my brush. I think I want this little tip out here to be the brightest. And of course you can manipulate and kind of bend that edge if you want to change the shape of it a little bit. And then I'm going to pull my little highlight for this one. I'm going to just kind of pull it up a little bit because I feel that this would be the brightest part that you would that the, the sun would be highlighted. You could even make it go poke over that, that other one. I'm putting a little cute tip on it here. And you can have fun with this. You can, you know, kind of manipulate it as much as you want. I think I'm gonna put a little highlight here. That's going to give you some shape, bringing it down in a curved fashion. And you can see as I'm adding these highlights, I'm really just bringing some life to this particular leaf. And it's telling the viewer, oh yeah, that's the top of it. And there's, there's some dimension to it. Um, and again, if you make it too light or you don't have enough streaks in it, you could always put some little veins in it um, if you wanted to. That would be, um, you know, just taking your brown and deciding if you want it to be dark in the center or have little veins, but I'm gonna skip the, skip the vein section here. I'm just gonna, I think I want this to be a little bit taller here. So you can see, I'm just kind of manipulating it as I want. I wanted this to be a little bit bigger, so I just kind of add that in through there. I can't forget about my little guy down here. Um, I would just want to add a little bit more here. It's so tough when you're getting into these stages where, you know, you want to, I want to make sure this stands out um, in front of my, my grassy area behind. So that was an important piece. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of highlight over here on this right one. So again, I just have yellow and white, wiping my brush, and then I'm just gonna kind of pull it into that leaf. Maybe this one looks like it's going to the side, bringing it down to, to the little tip there. I think I want a touch of white on here too. Sometimes it's tough to know how, how bright you want that highlight. I think that's pretty good. Maybe a little bit of white over here again. I like these highlights to really pop out. So they add so much drama to the painting. So if you can really capture a nice, a nice vibrant, you know, think of it like the sunshine is just kissing the edges of these, of these leaves. Um, and sometimes the the, hot, the brightest part doesn't even have to be at the edge. It can be a little bit away from the edge. That's gonna give more of an illusion of it being a round object. Um, and then we are going to switch brushes to our big brush. So once you get your highlights and your shadows on your stems, you can um, put this brush away in your water cup if I can ever put my brush away in my water cup and take out your large brush for the next step. All right, 
So what we're going to do for the next step is we're finishing the inside of the flower. Um, there are there is going to be another step where we connect that center to the um, to the petals. So don't be alarmed if after this step it still looks a little bit disconnected. But we're going to be using our large brush. We're going to be using brown, orange, yellow, and white to create this center area. And the sometimes I don't feel like the smartest person in the world, especially when talking about the anatomy of flowers. Um, I think these are the seeds in the middle of the flower. Um, I might be wrong, but we're going to call it the seeds. <laughs> Um, so I want it to look like it's um, kind of bumped out or in almost like a donut type shape. So I want to keep the center dark and the edges dark, but I want a highlighted area like in a donut type shape. Um, and I want the lightest part over on the left. So that would tell me that the sun, that it's poking out the most and it's being hit by the sun, the sun the most. And this side would be shadowed by the petals. So I'm gonna put my brightest area right here. So how I'm gonna start is I'm gonna start with just brown on my brush. So I have just brown. And what I'm in essence doing is kind of wetting the surface and I'm gonna to continue to just do it with the initial brush stroke, which was the dabbing or the dots. Um, and then what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna wash my brush. I'm picking up orange. And if you want your brush to be in control and you don't want your bristles to be all splayed out, you can take your brush and kind of squish it on the side of your palette and that's going to provide you, it'll take your bristles and bring them together. I kind of like my brush a little messy, but some of you need yours nice and clean, so that's why I give you that instruction. So now what I'm doing, this is where I start my donut. I am creating a kind of a circular area within my overall space. Now, I'm not gonna wash my brush. I'm picking up yellow and white. I have, so now I have brown, orange, yellow, and white on my brush all at the same time, but predominantly I have yellow and white. And this is where I'm gonna start dotting in. Think of it like little tiny speckles. So I'm really almost using the corner of my brush to add these speckled type marks. I don't sit in one spot and dot, 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 dot a thousand times because that's gonna make it all blend into one, into one solid color and you won't be able to see the little speckle marks. So if that happens to you, don't worry. Just kind of let it dry for a minute and then you can come in and pop back in some of those brighter little speckles um, on the top. So I, I do want it to look like it's all kind of cohesive and that there are seeds all over the place. So as I'm running out of paint on my brush, you can kind of dab in um, some fainter or um, less dominant seeds around the exterior or in the center. Um, I'm gonna uh, elevate my brightness before I call it on this. I'm gonna make mine just a little bit brighter. So I added a little bit more yellow and white to it. I wanna make sure that it really reads as this left-hand side is being dominated by the sun and has the, the brightest, brightest area to it. There we go. Now, now we're talking. I got lots of bright sun-lit seeds and it's really reading as this left-hand side is being highlighted. And then we're gonna switch back to that medium brush. So once you get your seeds in place, once you've seeded your seeds, we're gonna switch brushes to the medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are doing our petals on the field flowers. So how I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna use my medium brush. I'm just using yellow and white. You could certainly incorporate a little orange if you wanted to, um, but I just want mine brighter as if they've, you know, they're not being shadowed by anything. They've got a lot of brightness to them. Um, I am gonna have them varying sizes. I do want at least one or two that's gonna cross over my horizon line. Um, and then the others, I'm just gonna kind of disperse. Some are gonna be larger, some are gonna be smaller. Um, I'm going to put both yellow and white on my brush at the same time. And think of this as almost like a little firework. 
all of these petals are going to come out of the same spot. We're going to put the centers in later, but right now we're just going to put the petals on. And the easiest way for me to describe it is just kind of have yourself a little nucleus and just make yourself these little kind of sprouted out petals. And you'll see, you know, you're apt to see some of the um, ground behind it. Don't worry about that. I'm going to put this one, like I said, I want to have at least one or two that crosses over into the sky, um, over my horizon line. And you can have as many of these as you want. Maybe yours is one of those fields like I was referring to earlier in Tuscany that they have. I, I tell you, there's millions of sunflowers wow. in these fields, which is so super cool to see. Um, maybe at times you make these little tiny just hints of flowers here or there. As long as we've got that yellow and white color, we're good to go. Um, I'm gonna put a couple over here. And like I said, in a little bit, we'll put um, some centers on, on some of these so you can, you'll have a little bit more um, information to them. But when you get done putting as many of these as you want, you can, let's see, what are we gonna do next? We're going to switch to, we're gonna to switch to the small brush. So once you get done putting all these cute little flowers just dispersed throughout your field, you can um, put the large brush or the medium brush away, get your small brush out and get ready for the next step. All right, so we're on to the next step and I'm gonna be using my small brush and I don't know what to call what we're doing other than the hairy things. <laughs> so please forgive me. It's gonna be the little tiny pieces of something <laughs> that's coming from the center to the petal itself. It really kind of connects them and they remind me of eyelashes um, and that they look hairy to me. So So the colors that I'm going to be using are black, brown, orange, yellow, and white. Um, and I'm going to be doing just this quick little flicky motion. I don't think about it. I want it to be messy. Um, so I'm going to do a little bit with black. I don't like to do a lot with the black. Um, but what I'm going to do, I'm probably going to do it a little bit darker on this right side and a little bit lighter on the left side. Again, just to add a little bit of dimension. You want to if you do have some petal edges that you want to keep, just go around them. These can act as little like shadows between your petals. Um, I'm now picking up some brown and I'm just kind of, it, you're almost kind of like filling in the gaps um, and adding a couple of extra little pieces that might overlap some of those petals. Um, and if you run into some wet paint every now and again, no worries. Um, I'm gonna, I'm picking up orange now. And I just kind of keep going around in these, um, around, the, around the horn. I just kind of keep going until I feel like I have enough substance here that it translates as natural. Um, if it's really systematic and you have every single one of them going exactly the same distance away from each other, it's not gonna it's not gonna look very natural um, which might look pretty cool if you're going for like a representational kind of painting that's awesome um, but now that I've got the orange on there now I'm just gonna start using yellow and if you want a little bit of white um, again all these different colors on here are going to make it look more natural so if you found yourself using too much black at one point, this is gonna to help to counteract it. If you find yourself using too much orange at one point, this will help counteract it. And I am crossing over into um, the center of the flower a little bit. So that's gonna, that, cause that kind of is where they're coming from, I think. <laughs> um, but again, I'm just trying to make it look a little natural here with these hairy things coming out of the center. And then once I feel like I've got it connected well, then we're gonna um, switch brushes to the medium brush. So you can put this small brush away in your water cup, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna 
kind of finish the bottom half of the canvas, which is going to be the centers to these flowers and stems and grass. Um, it's a very fun, like free flowing step. So we're just going to go from one into the next. The colors that I'm going to use are orange, brown, green, yellow, and white. <laughs> um, and how I'm going to start it is I'm going to have brown, orange, and yellow on my brush to create the centers. So I'm just going to put brown, orange, and yellow on my brush all at the same time. And I'm really just going to put some messy like dots in the center of these flowers. And because I'm using all these varying colors on my brush, it's going to provide a variety of shades in the center. And you don't have to do them all. You might decide that you just want to do a couple of them. And then I'm not going to wash my brush, but I'm also not going to pick up orange again. I want to use the remnants of the orange to add to the grass and the stems. So I'm just going to pick up green at this point, and I'm going to start adding some little grass and some stems throughout the ground. Um, that's not popping out enough for me, so I'm going to start adding a little bit of white, yellow, and green. And this is going to help to add some vibrancy to this grass and stem. Really what I'm trying to do is cause these to look like they're in the foreground and this background area to get set back a little bit more. So I'm just kind of adding some little bits of grass and some stems maybe. Maybe I put a little bit in front of the bottom of this big stem to break it up a little bit. Um, you can, you know, if you wanted to have more orange, feel free to do so, more brown, just something that's going to allow us to break up the kind of monotony of that background that we had. And then once you feel like you've got enough on here, I mean, you could bring, you could make this really vibrant, more vibrant than I have it if you'd like to. But then once you've got this, we are going to use this same brush for the next step but I'm gonna wash it and dry it before I do so. All right, so what we're gonna do for this step is we are adding the final layer to our petals and I'm gonna be using my medium brush and I'm gonna be using predominantly white and yellow, but I might use a little bit of orange too. So how I'm gonna do this is in a very carefree, fast way. My brain is gonna tell me the lighter stuff is going to be on the right, but I do want to have some really kind of light flicks of highlights on this side too. And I know that I have back petals and front petals. So when I'm, when I'm creating this second layer, I am consciously thinking, oh, that's a front petal. Maybe I'll put a little edge here or that's a back one. Maybe I'll put a little, you know, just a little tip of the edge there. So I go fast. You're going to notice how fast I go. Um, but the goal here is to make it as vibrant as you want. Keep some bend in your, in your petals. If you, you'll notice my brush will a lot of time just almost do an arcing motion. Um, if you get it to blend in a little bit with those little hairy things, great. Um, and if you can have some pops of white in many places, that's going to help you out. And this is where you get to ch change or, you know, control the shade or the, you know, if you want your sunflower more on the yellow side or more on the orange side, this is where you can certainly control that. So here I go. I'm putting yellow and white on my brush and I'm using a lot of paint this time. So on other steps where I said don't use a lot of paint, this one is one where I like to use a lot. So I'm just going to start adding my layers onto here. I'm watching my um, the petals where I had originally placed them and I'm just kind of using this second step to enhance what I had done on the first layer. So maybe this is saying, oh, okay, well, you know, you've got that nice yellow color to it um, with this hint of orange underneath it, or maybe you've got it really bright at the edge and then it just fades into a little bit darker where it's hitting the center. So this is going to give you a little bit more dimension to it. Um, I am going to just kind of get them on here. I am 
flying right around it. I know that I want to kind of not dullen some of this orange, but I do, I like to have it as that undertone. So that's where you'll see me almost um, making it into a softer hue, which is where this white and yellow on the second layer is coming into place. Um, and I like to do these in multiple layers because I did paint directly on top of the blue sky, um, which is great. Um, and it gives, allows um, the painting to have a lot of natural tones to it. Um, but by doing multiple layers, you've given yourself almost like a nice base coat for the, for the particular flower or whatever you're painting. Um, and it makes the second time around or the detail, um, the detail step of it more prominent and it allows you to apply more details without working so hard at it. So I'm just kind of putting on some extra highlights here, my nice sunshine. Really right now, I'm just picking up white and I'm adding little bits of highlights to a lot of these petals here because I really want them to read as being, you know, they are just, this is the sunflower. It's got to be illuminated by the beautiful sun that mother nature provides and you know, again, you can have fun with it. You maybe yours ends up having, you know, these beautiful, systematic kind of um, design to it. Maybe yours looks like one of those um, pinwheels that we used to have as a kid that we would sit and, and blow. Maybe all your petals are going in the same direction. It's really, you know, you're gonna find that your natural brush stroke will really kind of dictate how, what the end result of this painting ends up looking like, um, which is just such a beautiful element of painting itself. And I am just kind of wrapping up here. I think I wanna add a little bit more yellow on this side, bringing these into there a little bit more, maybe a little bit more white on this side. You know, and again, have fun with this, just make it, make it as alive as you want it to be. Make it, you know, make this sunflower the one that you want, you know, to surround your house. You know, you can really have a whole lot of fun with that and putting little extra bits of yellow over here. And if you want it, again, if you want yours to be more on the orange side, you could certainly add some more orange in this step, um, but, it's, this is definitely one of those steps that's so hard for me to stop because you just saw I probably, I just added another petal. It's really hard for me to control myself <laughs> when I'm making these beautiful sunflowers. Um, I'll probably just do a couple more brush strokes here and then I'll try to move on to the next step, which is probably one of the most important steps of your masterpieces as you go through this painting process and it's gonna be with this, uh, no, actually we'll use the small brush for the next step. So once you have all of your petals on here and you're happy, you can put this medium brush away in your water cup and take out your small brush for the final step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is the final step to any painting, which is to sign it. I'm gonna use my small brush. I am gonna use black paint and you could sign yours in the bottom left or the bottom right, wherever you want. I'm gonna do mine actually in the bottom right this time. And I do my initials. You could do your last name, you could do the date, you could do a symbol, whatever you want to identify your painting is your decision. That is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you love your beautiful sunflower and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.